So I thought this week, to start this session, we should uh, have a flag break and raise the flag. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a Union Jack at home. I do have another jack though. Uh, this is a jack or an enzyme flag and this is quite a special flag. This flag was a flag for a section of the French resistance during the Second World War, specifically that smuggled um, equipment and supplies across the English Channel in small boats. This enzyme was made after the war. For obvious reasons, um, the French resistance aren't going to advertise themselves, aren't going to have anything that identifies themselves if they're trying to sneak across the channel to occupied France. So this flag was made after the Second World War and was presented to a number of people who assisted the French resistance um, in their missions across the channel, which included uh, my grandfather, and this is how this uh, flag came about. Okay, so to put this uh, flag up, we're going to have to do a couple of knots. Um, they're both knots that you will have done, if you recall the last session, where we were in the church hall and you had to do some knots. Um, you should have covered both of these. Um, and we'll go over them in more detail in another video. But there's just two I'm going to use here. On the top of the uh, jack here, we have a toggle. Um, and at the bottom, we have a loop. So with the loop, we're going to use a sheet bend. Um, this is a really simple knot used to tie together two ropes, especially where they're of different um, sizes. So we've already got a loop in this end. Um, so the end goes through, it goes round the back, it goes back under, and it gets pulled tightly. And it's a little bit like a, a simple reef knot, but the tighter you pull, the more secure it is. The second knot we're going to do is a bowling. Okay, so we do our E, we go up, round the back, and down again. And that leaves a nice little knot like that and we can tighten that up. And it should leave you something like that. So now our toggle can go on here. And it doesn't need to be overly tight, but that's enough now. We can put the flag up. stand at ease. Okay, and now on with the rest of the video. Hi, welcome to our extra wildlife session. Um, we have a bit of an issue at home at the moment with wood mice um, and uh, we have here a humane trap and we've actually caught a baby wood mouse. Um, we've released the two adults already in this area and so in here we have a juvenile wood mouse and we are going to very carefully release him in a minute and hopefully you can have a, a, a look at him. Okay, so the mouse is in the trap here. This is a humane trap. The mouse comes in. When it gets to a pressure point here, this door closes. So the mouse is quite safe. At the back here, uh, we have peanut butter. Um, mice really like peanut butter. And this mouse, you'll probably see when it comes out, has got it all over its tail. So I'm just going to lift the door here. And there he goes. And he's just crawling off into the grass there. There he goes, nice in the cover. 
and he's safely away. So that's our little wood mouse um, and hopefully he will find some uh, nice in cover to hunker down and there's plenty of food out here. Okay, so book of the week. I thought, as some of you are quite avid readers, and I know there's a lot of Harry Potter fans out there, I would do a book of the week. Um, just something that I recommend, you might want to try. Um, all the books I do will be available. Uh, the one I'm going to do now is actually out of print, but it is available on Amazon second hand for about £3, and also available on Abe Books um, second hand and uh, I will put the links for both these in the description below. So the book I'm going to recommend is called The Awakening Water. Quite an easy read. Um, it's a book that I read when I was about your age and I fell in love with and um, I've actually read it since as an adult and it is a really good read. Um, what, it's, what is it about? So the main character John lives in a very different world from ours um, and there's been a big disaster. It never really mentions in the book what it is, but John as a child lives in a children's home and the children there are doped. They're kept um, in a sort of fuzzy state. And one day uh, John sees this girl and he follows her and she gets him to drink some water from a stream. And um, this is where the title Awakening Water comes from. John suddenly, it clears his mind. He realises what's going on. And John then hatches an escape plan and escapes out into the wood where he finds a number of children living secretly, hiding from the government, um, trying to rebuild a life. Um, certainly suitable for anyone of scout age. Like any good um, children or teen book, I would recommend this to the adults as well. Um, so I'll read you the blurb on the back. That powder that the duty men put in the water, said the girl. That's kind of dope to keep you quiet. At first, John did not believe what the strange girl had said. After all, she was only one of the lost ones, one of those who'd run away from the party's protection to live in the wilds. It wasn't until John tasted pure water, the awakening water, again, that he realised the true implications of what she said then he knew that he too must escape. So, recommended book, really good, easy read, um, kind of 150 plus pages, so um, you should be able to read this quite quickly. Um, as I say, it is available second hand on Amazon in hardback. Um, it is also uh, available in a few other second hand bookstores for delivery. Um, if anyone can't find it and is desperate to read this um, once we're back to normal, please give me a shout and I'm happy to lend this to you. And uh, we'll bring another book next time. If any of you have a book that you want to recommend, um, that you really enjoy, um, something a bit different so everyone will know the Harry Potter series, for example, um, but perhaps something that you love that other people don't know, please let us know, put a comment down below and we'll do a review of that as well. So I thought we'd do YouTuber of the week. Um, as we're all stuck at home and we're inside and this is on YouTube, I thought I'd introduce you to some of the YouTubers uh, that I subscribe to and I watch and maybe of interest to you. So this week we are going down and we're going to have a look down the bottom here at Tom Scott. Tom Scott, um, his, one of his videos is playing here, is a YouTuber who's been online doing YouTube videos since about 2006 and um, he has done a number of TV shows as well and he works with things like the National Computing Museum and the Open University to create some really good video content. So what's Tom Scott about? Tom Scott is really about stuff that is, you don't know, stuff that's unusual and strange. He has a number of different series. Um, the one that's shown now is Amazing Places and it's about, well this one's about the shortest river in the world. Um, he does things about unbelievable bridges, places that aren't in any country, 
stuff you might never have knew existed, but really fascinating. He also does a lot of science stuff, building, creating stuff. Um, he's built an emoji keyboard, for example, with every emoji. Um, he does things you might not know, strange facts, unusual things that may have an impact on us that you just didn't know about. Um, like the secret pipelines that run under the UK, providing fuel for airports, um, which is still secret today, built in the Second World War. Um, he does a few crazy adventures. Um, he covers linguistics. He covers a lot of computer science and coding. Really good if you're doing IT. Really interesting stuff. Anyone out there who's interested in computer engineering um, and coding and development. Um, and he talks a lot about the future as well. Um, so, a really good YouTuber. I'll put a description and a link down below, um, and hopefully you'll have a have a look. Um, and we're going to pop back next week. Uh, we'll have a look maybe at some of the other YouTubers I look at. Um, there's a couple of uh, YouTubers who are really good for art. Um, there's a YouTuber, Kirsty Partridge, I'll show you next week, who is uh, really good for learning how to draw and do art. Um, but I do recommend Tom, Tom Scott and... Uh, Please check him out below. Click Champ Create. Welcome to the Easter Crafts section. They're not really Easter Crafts, but it's coming up to Easter time, so we've called it Easter Crafts. Okay, these are both quite simple, using things around the house, and hopefully you can get them to work. So the first thing we're going to do is caterpillar racing. For this, you need uh, some strips of paper, Go, Millie. And you're going to take your paper and you're going to fold it back and forward. So concertina it, fold it one way, and then the other, and then the other, and keep going all the way until you've got effectively a spring. So you should end up with something like that. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to trim around the top and bottom. It's really important to make sure you don't cut through here or here because otherwise you're going to have a broken caterpillar as I found out. So you must leave a bit there And likewise, you need to leave a bit there, because if you don't, you'll just have lots of bits of paper. Okay, so... Let me pass this across to Millie. So this then... should be... your caterpillar. If you do it wrong, you'll end up with a short caterpillar, because you cut across these bits here. So, obviously, your caterpillar needs at least a face. Um, I think I don't know. Right, Millie looks like she's done exactly the thing. Okay, so we've got our smiling caterpillar. So once we've got our caterpillars, we're going to race them. So, the ideal thing to have is a straw. But plastic straws are really bad for the environment, so we don't want plastic straws unless you have any around the house. You obviously can't go out and buy them. If you don't have a straw, which I didn't have, you can get a piece of paper and you can roll it up uh, nice and tightly. And keep on doing it. And if you want to put a bit of cell tape across it, like I've done here, then you're ready to race your caterpillars. And that's caterpillar racing. The second thing we're going to make is racing or walking horses. Um, this one's made out of paper. If you've got card construction paper, best. But we have to make do with what we've got. So these ones are made out of printer paper. Now, if you have a look at the video, you'll see what they should look like. And I've prepared a template for you, which I'll show you in a minute. The first thing you need to do 
you'll need a pen and a ruler and you're going to draw out the template. So it's a 15 centimeter by four and a half centimeter square. And when you've finished, it should look like this. So our template has a body, and legs, a tail, and a head. So Millie's got one here, I've got one here, so we're going to cut it out. So the first thing you want to do is cut out the whole square. So we'll with a four and a half centimeter by 15 centimeter rectangle. Next, we need to make a cut to separate the legs from the tail and the legs from the head. We do this both sides because horses have four legs, at least most of the time. anyone can do this with a six-leg horse, I'll be very impressed, or a three-leg horse. So once you've got the legs cut out, we're going to fold them down, so we've got the four legs. Now with the tail, what we're going to have to do is curl the tail. Horses don't have curly tails, but this works best with a curly tail because it helps balance it. And the best way to do that is just curl it around a pen or a pencil. It doesn't have to be really curly, just so it sticks up. With the head, I'm going to bend it up and we're going to put a fold halfway and then we're going to fold in the head like this just to make a little head. And that should be your horse. What you then need to do, make sure the legs are straight, is you're going to have to experiment here with a slope and put your horse in and as you knock it, it should start to walk down the slope. I couldn't get ours to work. There's Millie's horse. Fantastic. <laughs> it may be a unicorn. What I'd like to see is you experimenting with this and you getting <laughs> the horses to walk. Alternatively, you can get them to gallop like Millie just did. Okay, the last art activity we have is Millie is going to set an art challenge. So what's your art challenge, Millie? Um, uh, forgotten. Millie's forgotten. Okay, the challenge Millie has come up with um, this week is to redesign our logo. So if you have a look at our logo here, can you do your own version? What do you think represents the group? So that's Millie's art challenge, your own Fourth Milton Regis Scout Group logo. Please then put your your um, attempts either on our Facebook page or on the Instagram group which we've set up, which I will link down below, or in the comments below, and we'll have a look at the best. And we're going to set an art challenge for you every week. So if anyone has any art challenges that you want to do, please let us go. No, and. That's all for the moment. So that's it for this week. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what you do with the arts and crafts um, and any comments from you. I hope you're all staying safe and keeping active. Uh, next week, we're going to try and do some outdoor stuff. I'm going to do a fire lighting tutorial. Um, I'm going to also teach you how to make charcoal cloth and we might have a go at making charcoal. So that'll be next week. Um, I know it's half term next week. But I thought I'd probably do a video anyway, because, you know, it's not like there's anything else to do at the moment. So stay safe, uh, keep scouting, and we'll see you all next week. Goodbye. <laughs>